Um, I had one more thing that I was really excited to talk about this week that uh, this is actually a really, really cool thing that I wanted to bring up um, if it's okay with you guys. So take a look at this picture. Does anything look unique about this photograph? It's Uh, in black and white. (laughs) So for those of you listening, I'm showing a picture of a satellite in space. And what's unique about this, this is actually the first time there's ever been a direct, like, close-up picture of a geostationary satellite in geostationary orbit. Because normally you don't want these things getting anywhere near each other, right? If two satellites are this close in orbit, like, you're probably going to have a bad day. But the reason is, this is a really cool mission and a really cool project that Northrop Grumman has been working on. And it's basically called the... um, the ex- what is it the great <laughs> the MEV mission extension vehicle the idea is you know most of these big satellites like this is an, an intel sat um, satellite that's been up there for 10 15 years or whatever and they have to kind of use a little bit of propellant as they maintain their perfect pointing at earth you know and maintain their perfect thing and mm-hmm. eventually they have a lifespan and they run out of fuel and right as they're about to do that they normally like, kick them out of geostationary orbit and put them into a graveyard orbit where they won't run into anything else. Well, the idea is some of these satellites can be, you know, hundreds of millions, maybe some of them are a billion dollar plus satellites, really expensive satellites. And Northrop Grumman has this idea that why don't we fly a smaller mini satellite, connect to the old satellite, and basically like take over the propulsion of it and and become a new engine, a new thruster system, a new way to maneuver have and and then basically just like fly in tandem holding on to this old satellite so the satellite continue to operate because the satellite you know the the electronics on it can operate basically for infinity but satellites need to be in such a perfect you know perfectly synced position that their lifespan is based basically on how much propellant they have so hmm. this was successful they actually just recently um, they, this launched in October on a um, on a progress vehicle in Russia, and then it went up and and sunk with this with a satellite. And what it does is it actually grabs onto the engine. This tiny there's these tiny little like engines on on a lot of these geostationary um, vehicles. That is kind of how it gets itself into its final orbit and all that stuff. Could we call up. those rockets? That's a rocket. Yep, <laughs> that is a rocket. And it goes up and grabs onto the nozzle. And literally it holds onto the nozzle. And then from there, it just like almost like seeing eye dogs it around and and pushes it around in space and basically gives it a new up to five year new lease on life, which is hmm. super cool. That's awesome. And, and this so, is the first time a, a commercial satellite has docked with another satellite, right? Yeah. 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 Well, and it should be mentioned, this somewhere. satellite was built without this intended. It's not like the satellite was built with a docking port. You right. know, the satellite didn't yeah, I was have... about that any grappling mechanism it was never intended to do this but this is a new thing that's becoming more and more popular is the idea that hey maybe our satellites should have ways to be able to refuel them maybe our satellites should have ways to be able to grapple on you know grapple on and have parts get replaced that you know gyroscopes maybe that that might go bad have a way a system that someday a little robot can go around and replace parts refuel satellites and and have in space servicing um and this isn't necessarily the first time uh, the space shuttle actually did something like this too. Like 30 years ago, they went up and serviced um, a kind of crazy satellite that w- that was not performing right. They went up and serviced it, and apparently that was cheaper than just launching the satellite again. But <laughs> somehow it was, I guess. <laughs> and uh, so that concept isn't new. But the space shuttle, of course, was limited to like you know couldn't really get above 500 kilometers. And geostationary orbit is way out there. Like well, I don't remember what it is, like 35,000 kilometers, basically. So it's just really cool to see something like this actually coming to life. And I think this is just the very, very start of, um, of this whole concept and mm. really of how that's going to be working in the future. Um, well, that, that was the thing that was special about that picture was that the earth was so small in it. Mm-hmm. It took me a minute. Yeah. The earth was so small and we're seeing a satellite up close and personal, like, yeah. you know, like that. So that's definitely a unique vantage point and a, and a unique uh, business case and a unique proposal and i think it's really cool and i think north of grumman will have a bright future in this space if they can promise you know and especially if people start designing their satellites around this potential someday it's like hey you know we'll put this port on it make sure that it can be refueled later on 
Um, is this going to end up like a human centipede kind of thing? Will you just have like 20 years from now, you'll just have like 30 of them daisy chained <laughs> together. Well, the, <laughs> you know? the interesting about this is the MEV, this is its first mission. It'll do this for about five years or so. And then it's supposed to go fly and do it again for another satellite. Uh, leave that satellite and go to leave another that one? satellite and go to another oh, wow. one. So I guess it has that much potential. Oh, that's super to... cool. Yeah. It's like so, the Wally of space. Kind of. Yeah. <laughs> Running around. Well, I don't remember what. Well, company... So, so sorry, but I mean like, could, could that same technology be used to take space debris out? Like yes. find, find the satellites in, the, in that graveyard orbit and definitely throw them into the ocean or something. hundred percent. Yep. Ah, I want that. And that would it's... be really good. It's it's going to be really good, and so it's, it's a great thing that we're finally starting to like at least have practice with, mm. um, you know, have some actual data coming back and and some use cases for it. And I think eventually what will happen is a, a satellite system will have to say they maybe want to have a tax or some kind of pool to be like an insurance policy that if our stuff dies, we'll have to hire one of these things or whatever to to take it out of space, you know, something like that. And there's another company I don't remember who it is, but they're they're even working on going up and refueling a spacecraft. And the problem is the spacecraft has, you know, the ports where it originally got fueled up, right? Like before the mission, but ground technicians, they literally like uh, spin the valves shut and wire, you know, wire them together and make sure that they are never to be opened again. So this robot has to go up there and snip the wires, unscrew this like valve that was never intended to be open. And they're going to try refueling the satellite. Huh? It's really, really cool. But they're going to yeah. get up there. It's just going to be like, oh, we forgot that there was another screw right there. Whoops. Because <laughs> yeah. we, we launched this we, in like the 70s. We so... brought a flathead and we needed a Phillips. Right. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They it's stopped a five making those. and I need a six eighteenth. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah. Because that's what cool. I go through in my garage every five days. <laughs> but congrats, North of Grumman, on uh yeah, that's really cool. a, a historic first and, and an exciting future for that concept. I'm really, really, really excited cool. about that. Yeah. Reusable satellites. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Hey, thanks for checking us out, guys. I hope you enjoyed this clip from our podcast. We do a weekly show here on YouTube, so make sure and subscribe to Our Ludicrous Future, where we discuss all the things that are going to make our future totally ludicrous. You can join us here on YouTube or at any of your favorite podcast places. Plus, if you want to get some behind-the-scenes stuff and join a cool community, you can help support the channel at patreon.com. Thanks a lot. Thanks, guys.